Hello, welcome to another Ultimate Game Host video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating a basic textured model for Gary's Mod using Blender on Microsoft Windows 7. This is best viewed at 720p full screen, or you can download the PDF from the description if you'd rather read along. So in addition to that PDF, the description also includes download links for all the programs used, timecode links so you can skip around this video, it is long, almost an hour, and sections of text that are copy pasted in the video. So if we paste it in three lines of code, we'll have those available in the description. And here's the example of what you're going to be making in the tutorial. It's a basic model for Gary's Mod with a custom texture. And that's it from scratch. Uh, these instructions are supplied without warranty or guarantees of any kind. Ultimate Game Host assumes no liability for any damage resulting from the use of this video. Use this video at your own risk. Thank you for watching, let's get started, good luck, and as always, have fun. Welcome to section one of the tutorial where we will download all of the needed software to make this happen. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this file on the desktop I have with the download links. These will be in the video description as well. And I'm just going to get started walking you through going to these places to get these items. So I'm going to open up Chrome. I'll paste in the first link here. We're going to go get Blender, a wonderful free 3D production suite. And I'm working on Windows 64 bit. So I'm going to download the installer. It won't hurt to start some of the others too while that's going. I think by default these are going to end up in my downloads folder. Yes, they are. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. I'll use the same tab. So Blender Source Tools is the item that lets us do all the exporting from Blender that's appropriate for source. Now, our written guide will have a different version of the tool in it. This is a later one. We're, we wrote it for 110.2, but they have 110.4 now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. We should be okay, even with the updated ones. We're going to go over to Chaos Incarnate and grab Studio Compiler. And the download link, I believe, is right down here. So the tutorial uses 0.4a. Now we need VTF edit. And for this, we'll grab the 125 installer file. And we'll go get the GIMP. Now, if you're more familiar with another photo program, of course, go ahead and skip the GIMP, but we'll go through in detail what needs to be done. Download GIMP 2.810 via HTTP for Windows XP or later. That sounds good. We'll keep that one. And .NET Framework 4. A couple of these programs run in .NET. So we need this. So we get the standalone installer for .NET Framework 4. Go ahead and say no thanks and continue to all the extra stuff. And keep, and that's coming down. And now Visual C++ 2008 feature pack. And that one starts downloading automatically from that link. So now I've got a bunch of files coming down. I'm going to cut the film here so that we don't have to watch me download these. All right, and while those files are continuing to download, there's a couple things we need to check for in Steam. So I'm going to open up my library over here. And so first off, we have Gary's Mod installed. If you don't have it installed, you'll, you'll want to install it. And then you can click on All Games in Steam and click on Tools. And what you're looking for in this list is the Source SDK Base 2013 single player, which I already have installed ready to play on here. It takes about 8 gigabytes, so you're looking at maybe a long download time if you don't have a very fast connection. Um, 
But those are the other two things you need. In the next video, we'll work on setting up and installing all this software. Welcome to section two, where we'll go ahead and install all this software that we've downloaded to get ready. I'm going to go ahead and start with Blender. I'll run this one. We're going to accept the defaults the whole way through. Depending how long these installers run for, I might um, might cut the film a little bit. Okay, so Blender's done installing. I accidentally elected to run it, but um, that's no big deal. We'll close it back out. Let's go ahead and do the .NET installer next. Again, we might uh, might bridge the gap here by cutting quickly to the next. All right, the .NET framework is done. That did take a little while. Now we'll go ahead with the GIMP. Again, we'll skip right to the end of the install. The GIMP install is all done. Click Finish on that. Run Studio Compiler Setup. Next, I agree. The defaults are fine. We'll uncheck both of these boxes and click Finish. We'll run the Visual C++ Redistributable now. Okay, that's all done. And now we'll install VTF Edit. Last, but certainly not least. We'll accept the agreement. Next, next. I'm going to go ahead and create a desktop icon and associate it with VMT files. Do the install. And we're done. Welcome to section three. This will be a pretty quick section. We're just going to configure a few of the programs here that we need to use. We'll start with Blender. Now we didn't we didn't install this in section two, and that's because it's part of the Blender configuration. So we'll do that now. Open up Blender. You can click once to get rid of the splash screen. We'll go to File, and then User Preferences, and we're on the Add-ons tab. Start out on add-ons and we'll do install from file. I'm going to navigate over here to the downloads folder. Select the blender source tools.zip and install from file. Now we have an item listed here for blender source tools. We're gonna check the box next to the little guy with his, running with his arms up over there and say save user setting. Once that's done, we'll close out. We're done configuring Blender. Now we will run Studio Compiler. And we need to configure the a couple paths here. So we'll click the Configure button. And we need to set up the Steam Game Directory and the SDK Tools Directory. Now I had noticed a problem in Windows 7 and it could be there's a, there's a fix for it, but what I found was that you can't use the browse function on this without it crashing. So what I've done, and the, the links will be provided for these items, is written out the path. So for me, it's a default Steam install, so it ended up in C program files, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, and that's the Steam game directory. So that's where Gary's Mod lives, makes sense. And then the SD, SDK tools directory again with a default Steam install, ends up in C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source SDK Base 2013 Single Player, and then the bin folder beyond that. And we'll click OK. And again, both of these will be noted as in the video description as well as in the companion text guide for this entire tutorial. 
So now that's set up. We can exit Studio Compiler for now. And we're going to run the GIMP, which we didn't end up with a desktop shortcut. It will be right there. So I'm going to send that to the desktop right now to make a shortcut. And you want to run the GIMP once because it does take a little bit for it to build its font cache the initial time, and we don't want it to interrupt the workflow later. Okay, so GIMP has started up. One of the things I like to do is uh, combine these windows. So what I'll do is go to Windows and Single Window Mode. And now I have the buttons on the side. just makes it a little easier dealing with the whole interface. And I'll close that out. And we're ready to move on to Section 4. Section 4 is all about setting up our working area. Uh, we're going to create a number of folders for this. For simplicity's sake, we'll work with it from the desktop. The add-on in this case will be called Example Ball. So I'm going to create a folder on the desktop called Example Ball. And then inside that folder, so this, if, if we think about how we're going to lay things out, this is going to be where all of our source files live. So the, the default Blender files, the default GIMP files for everything we create. And then underneath of this, of another folder in here called add-ons, which some of you might remember from downloading add-ons for games, we're going to put all the assets for this. So inside add-ons, of course, we'll want another example ball. If I could spell it right, it would be perfect. Example ball. And inside that we need, there's a lot of these, I'll show you a quick way to do it in a second here, materials, and inside here as well we need models, and then inside models we need example ball again, and then we'll go back up one, in materials we need models, and then Example ball. Now that was a lot of clicking. Some of you may not like that. And like I said, I'd show you a quicker way to do this. There's a command built into Windows 7, and I think previous Windows versions as well, that can make this a little easier. Essentially what you can do is run this. This is a one-line well, it's multi-lines joined into one line command. You run from from the start run box and it will create all these folders for you. In fact, it doesn't look like it quite wrapped properly here. So I'm just gonna adjust the line. We'll try to make the copy pasted one later work better than that. And I'm just going to delete this folder and run that command. So I'll do start. And type this in. Hit enter. And after a couple seconds, there is your example ball folder. And it looks like I missed one on my way through the compile folder, which will be inside the root. So on your desktop, you have example ball, compile and add-ons inside that, and inside add-ons we have example ball with the folders we set up before. So what will happen is all the items that we look to compile will go in here, and we'll go through all of it step by step the whole way, and make sure that you know where everything goes and what to do with it. We're all set on the working area and directories. We'll move on to section 5. We're back with section 5 of the tutorial. We're going to create the texture that we need in GIMP from scratch. So we'll go ahead and open up the GIMP from the desktop, or if you haven't made the icon, you can go to Start, All Programs, and GIMP 2. Should be right around the top. Once the GIMP is open, you, you might find that this toolbar over here is a little bit squished. Since we docked all the windows together, it might look more like that. And you just want to hover over until your cursor changes to look like that, hold the left mouse button, and drag it over so that you can see all the buttons and access and makes it easier to work with. So we're going to do File and New. It's going to be 512 Width, 512 Height, 
we're using pixels, px, and in the advanced options, we're going to change fill width to foreground color and click OK. We end up with a large black square. Now in the layers over here, right next to the eye, we're going to click in this little square that kind of pops up when you hover over it. Click once on that, and that locks the layer. That way we can't change the background by accident while we do the next set of changes. Now we're going to swap the foreground and background colors so that white is up top. And click on the A here to get into the text tool. We'll select sans bold as a font. We'll change the size to 48, make it easier to read, and the justify to centered. And we'll click somewhere around here and type in example ball. If that's not quite centered, and it probably won't be, you can click on the four arrows here that cross, the move tool, click on that once, and click and drag anywhere on the lettering to move it. And we want to put it right about in the center of the screen. Okay, so now we've created the basic texture. In the next section, we'll go ahead and save and export it to get it ready for the next steps. This is section six. It's going to be pretty quick, but um, in keeping with the text tutorial, we're going to go with these separate sections. So now we need to export and save this file so that we have it available and ready to use for VTF edit in the next steps. So we're going to do file save and go to the desktop in the example ball folder. I'm going to call this example ball underbar texture.xcf and I had an old one sitting there so I'm going to replace it. You probably won't get prompted for that. So now we have a file saved in the GIMP format which is great for GIMP not so great for most other programs. So we need to export to another file. The reason we save the XCF is in case we ever want to go back to it or change our texture and we don't have to recreate all that work again. So we're going to do an export now. Go to File and Export. And we're going to change the extension on this to TGA. By default it wants PNG, but we want TGA. I'm going to click on Export. And it's going in the same folder that the XCF is, that's okay. So now if we go to the desktop in the example ball folder, we have our example ball texture TGA and the example ball texture GIMP image file. And the next steps we'll work on getting this into a VTF. Here we go in section seven, we're going to create the VTF file from our GIMP work. Open VTF edit on the desktop. And we're going to choose File and Import. We'll navigate to the desktop in the Example Ball folder and choose Example Ball Texture .tga. We're going to open that. Use the defaults on all of this. You should be able to see the texture we made before. Very basic, but this is all about the basics here. Now we want to do File, Save As, and this time we want to save this in a different location. So we're going to go, so we're already inside the Example Ball folder on the desktop, but we want to go inside Add-ons, Example Ball, remember we created these folders in the previous steps, Materials, Models, Example Ball, and we're going to name this Example Ball Underbar Texture. We're going to save this, and then we're going to close VTF Edit. And in the next step, we will create the, the next section rather, we will create our VMT file, and I'll explain a little bit about how all that works. Welcome to section 8. We're going to go over creating the VMT file that we need. We're going to use Notepad for this. So I'm going to do Start and Notepad. And if Notepad isn't in your frequently used programs, you can go to All Programs, Accessories, and it's right there. Okay, so the VMT file specifies what the texture is for the object, as well as the properties of the material that the Source Engine would use. 
And I'll try to include a link in the text-based tutorial to a website that includes more descriptions about the properties that can be used. But for now, I'm just going to copy and paste in the code and talk a little bit about it. So this is the basic material code. I'm just putting in a couple tabs there to make it easier to read on the screen. And that's all there is to it. We're saying the base texture is models example ball, example ball texture dot VTF. And then the surface property is metal underbar bouncy. If you recall, if you've played the Half-Life games, maybe you haven't, but the metal barrels kind of make a certain sound when they hit things and that's a similar sound although those aren't bouncy i think they're just set up as metal there's a lot of different surface properties you can specify i think probably over 40 or 50 that make the the object behave differently so it's not so much the physics as the as the surface properties in here that determine whether or not something bounces for instance so we're going to go ahead and save this this is all we need for our basic basic model. There's a lot more properties you can get into, and I'll make sure in the text version to include some links to the source. Uh, I guess it's a technical wiki that they have that explains how all these different properties work, and there's a lot more to it that you can get into for making more complex objects. But again, we're going for simple just to get the whole workflow and method across of getting something from you know, inside your head to in-game as best as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and say File and Save As. And on the desktop, we'll go into the Example Ball folder. And we want to save this to the same place that we saved the VTF file. So go to Add-ons, Example Ball, Materials, Models, Example Ball. And if I change this to All Files, we'll see that our VTF file is still there. So I'm going to name this underbar texture dot VMT. Now that's the other reason to change to all files is because now I'll have a VMT, the ability to name the extension and not have it save as a text file. So we'll save that. And I'm just going to double check that that is saved correctly. If it hasn't, I'll walk you through how to, how to fix it. Looks good. So, so that is a VMT valve material file. And then the other is the valve texture file. So this tells you what it looks like. This tells you what it behaves like. Time to start modeling. Section 9. This is where things get a little more interesting. We're going to create the ball and we're going to texture it in Blender in this section. And it's going to be a lot of fun. If you've never used Blender before, I'm going to go slow and try to explain every step along the way for you. Let's get started. We're going to open up Blender. You can click once to remove the splash screen. Before we start doing the actual modeling, we'll want to save this file to the right place. So let's click File, Save As. I'm going to navigate to the desktop. In the Example Ball folder. And we'll save it in here as Example Ball. Dot blend. And that's the default Blender format. We'll save that. And to quickly save, you can press Control S on the keyboard and then click on this highlighted element where it says Example Ball dot Blend. You can save as, at as many points as you wish. Blender has a tendency to crash once in a while. We'll save maybe a couple times throughout. Um, depending on your experience, you may want to save more often than that. And let's get started on modeling. We're going to press A on the keyboard. And that deselects this default cube, they call it, in the middle. We're going to right-click once on this triangle above the camera. It's actually part of the camera. And right-click over here as well on this black dot. I'm going to hit the X on the keyboard. And then click Delete to delete those two objects out of the scene. So all we're left with is that default cube. We're going to right-click on the cube first and then press the Tab key to go into edit mode. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't actually happen. We're going to press W on the keyboard and then the letter U. And what that does is it subdivides the cubes. You can see it's getting a little more like a ball. We'll press W and then U again. 
and now we have something that's a lot closer to a ball and it's it's very low poly and it doesn't exactly roll right but for the basics of this tutorial I mean, you can for instance if you go a few levels further the object gets even rounder well as round as a cube that's been subdivided a few times can I'm gonna go back to where we were it's a basic ball you can create spheres but for the purpose of this tutorial it's a little easier to work through it this way so make sure that number lock is turned on on your number pad and press the number one on the number pad that'll bring you into front perspective view it changes up here to tell you what view you're in we're gonna press the number five on the number pad to make it an orthographic view and I'm rolling the mouse wheel up to zoom in a little bit press G on the keyboard followed by Z type in 1.6 and hit enter and what this has done is move the cube just up to the top and helps us out with the origin point of the object being below the object so that when it lands on a surface it'll interact properly so we've got the ball basically resting on the red line in the middle we're gonna split the view now this is a little bit tricky but there's a little you can see a couple little notches here at the top right of this window I'm gonna left click and drag that to the left as you can see we're splitting the view up with my mouse inside here I can hit the T key on the keyboard to remove the tools dialog you can also drag this in the middle to reposition while you're looking at this we're going to change the type of this window by clicking on this button here and selecting UV image editor now we will change the window on this side we'll zoom in a little more if you want to move the view like I just did up and down you hold shift on the keyboard hold the middle mouse button in and drag so I'm release the middle mouse hold the middle mouse and it moves release it and it stays where you left it now for the texture on this side we're going to choose image open image and we'll go to the desktop and in the example ball folder and we'll select the example ball texture.tga so now you can see that right there now what we need to do is mark a seam on this object so that we're ready to unwrap it so we're going to we can zoom in a little to make this easier again roll the mouse wheel up and then hold shift and hold the middle mouse button to move the image we're going to hold alt and right click on the outside edge so one of these outside edges and if I zoom out a bit I'll move it to the center again I can also hit the period key on the number pad to center this object in the middle of the screen and make it the pivot point if we hold the middle mouse button and move it you can see what we've done is we've selected this outer ring all the way around and that's going to be our seam for when we unwrap it for texturing so what we do now is we mark the seam we'll hold hit control E and select mark seam now we end up with sort of a reddish tint to that ring if you saw it change as we did that we can press the number one again to go into front orthographic view and press A to deselect press A again to select all vertices press U on the keyboard and then with your mouse click on left left click project from view now you can see over here how we now have a representation of the example ball on this side and you can right click to select vertices or you can press A to select all the vertices over on the left window we can set this to texture so now we can see if you hold the middle mouse button you can look around while you're here you can see it's not quite mapped up right it's it's skewed a little bit here and there and it's not gonna look perfect even when we do fix it up a little bit but it'll it'll be a little better so on the right side what we want to do 
is press S for scale and scale the UV map. And as I make it bigger, you'll see that text start to fit because this is basically a representation of the mesh and this shows what it's going to look like. So you can see example ball written there and on the back it's a little reversed. We'll get to that in a second. But now we have the texture basically mapped to that side. Press the number three on the number pad with this view, with the mouse on this view. We'll press A to select all and hit B on the keyboard and then click and drag a box around everything on the back side of this. I, I forgot a step in here. Um, the, other, the other thing we need to do We'll drag this over a little bit so we can see it is enable this box which stops limiting the selection to visible because what happened here is we only selected one quadrant of that so we want to hit a to deselect press b and once again we checked we we clicked that to make it lighter drag a box around this side and now we should have the whole back side of that sphere and what this will let us do is we can go to this right hand window and press A to select them all, click UVs, and then click mirror, and click X axis. And that turns the words around on the back so they don't look quite, quite so silly. So now we have words on the front and words on the back. I'll turn this off again so we don't see those distracting lines. And we have our basic textured object going on now in Blender. We want to click on this box and change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. And that's right here. And the reason we want to do that is because we need to scale this ball up now. If we put this into source as is right now, um, that size comes out to be, it looks sort of like a marble compared to the character. So that's a little bit small. So we're going to tab out of edit mode. And we still have our textured ball there. I'm going to hit S to scale and then the number 8 to make it bigger and hit enter to stop. You can roll the mouse wheel back. To roll out. As you can see, now we've got this ginormous ball, which is about the size of a, a small beach ball when you get into game. But again, as an example mod, this isn't so bad. We've finished with our basic model of the example ball. We've created it. We've textured it. It reminds me of one of those black t-shirts with few words on it. Which, by the way, you could, I suppose you could have written whatever words you wanted. Be creative. Uh, just be nice. And um, now we need to change a couple things before we export this to get it ready for compiling. And these are all pretty important. So we want to click over here and drag this over so we can see a little more what we're working with. With the ball selected, you can hit A to deselect everything and then right click on the ball to make sure it's selected. If it has that gold outline, it's selected. It also is selected up here in the cube as part of the scene. And we want to click on this orange square and we want to change the name of this object. So this is the object we're currently working with. It's currently called cube. We want to call it you, as you may guess, example ball. So now it's the example ball object. And then we want to go to the materials tab, this little circle looking thing here. Click that. We want to change the name of the material to example ball underbar texture, which is exactly what we called our VTF file. It's very important this match. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll end up with invisible balls inside the game and nobody likes invisible balls. So now we go over to the texture tab and we'll change the name of the texture to the same thing again. It's all very important. And we can also change the coordinates for the texture to UV. Now, we can save just to make sure our work doesn't get lost. We go to the Scene tab. We scroll down to the Source Engine Export. And we want to change a few things here. We want to change the export path to double forward slash. 
so it saves it to the same folder as the blend file. We want to click SMD, source model, and then we want to click ExampleBall.SMD. And I seem to have made a mistake somewhere. Oh yes, okay. The export, this, this double slash is supposed to be export path. My mistake. Example ball SMD. One file exported in 0.0. It happened in no time at all. And if we go over to the example ball folder, now we have that all set, ready to go for the next section. Welcome to section 10. So before we're ready to compile, we need to create a collision object for our ball. Now, this isn't necessarily the the best way to do a collision object. Usually you make it a little bigger or something like that, but in our case we're just going to create a copy of example ball. I can go over the theory a little bit quickly. Essentially this object needs another object that actually performs the physics interactions of it. So if, for instance, this ball was remember we were subdividing before making it smoother and smoother if it was made extraordinarily smooth and we tried to use that object as a physics object the source engine would have a have a bad time um, because of the number of vertices and how complex it is typically you'd make a sphere and then give it some sort of polygon as the physics object maybe make the physics object a little bit bigger uh, I can illustrate my point here by adding something. Say we wanted to make this collide with things in the world. We could add a cube. Again, don't follow along with this part, but just to illustrate the point, we could make it so that that, that cube that you see, I've gone to wireframe to show it, so if we have this is the object you see in game, and this is the physics object, then when the edges of this cube get hit, that's where the ball stops moving. In our case, we just want to stick with simple and work from the example ball itself being its own collision object because it's fairly simple. It's fairly low poly. There's not a lot of vertices there. It's not a perfect sphere or ball, but it's as a concept, this works. So what we'll do is you need a collision file for your model for that for collisions to work. Surprise, surprise. We're going to copy our example ball SMD. We'll paste it right here and we'll rename the copy example ball underbar collision. So that's the collision object. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to take both of these files and copy them and I'll paste them here into the compile folder. We need to make a QC document for the compiler to know what to do with our document. Now we've looked at the basic defaults that you can put in. Again, we're going to use Notepad for this. I'm going to copy and paste in the code and go through talking about it. The formatting on here has gone a little bit, so I'm just going to rearrange things quickly to the way they they were before I copy pasted it, make it a little easier to read. Okay, so in here we specify the model name that we're going to compile. We specify the directory inside materials where it is, and this, this may seem a little strange, but if you remember, when we did this we had add-ons, example ball, materials, models, example ball. So inside materials we have this models example ball. And that's where the VMT and the VTF files live. Get back to there. You can set the scale for the object, the surface property. Again we're going with metal bouncy in here. To be honest I don't know if the VMT file would overwrite this or not, but I found it works for the example ball. You set the body of the object to the example ball source model, and then the idle sequence to itself at 30 frames per second. This works well for static props like this that don't do anything, they don't break, they just move around and bounce. And the collision model is the example ball underbar collision.smd, and you set the mass to 40. You can set whatever you want, your mileage may vary. 
it's um again this is what we're using for the tutorial and these are the basic properties you have to change and again in the text version of the tutorial all this is available to copy paste and edit and do whatever you need to so it's easier format there so we're going to save this file save as we're going to go to the desktop in the example ball folder compile and change type to all files and we're going to save this as compile.qc think of this as a script that the compiler will use to actually make the object we need in the next section we'll go through that process section 11 we now need to compile the model. So to do this, we'll open up Studio Compiler, which is a wonderful tool from Canon Fodder. We're going to click the button for Compile with Existing QC, because we already wrote the file that governs the properties. We're going to use the Browse button here. We can go to the Desktop, Example Ball, Compile, and select Compile.QC. We're going to click the Compile button. A nerve-wracking experience to be sure and what you end up with is a whole lot of output essentially it's going to go through and it uses the tools in the source SDK to put this item together we found the 2013 single-player SDK works just fine for making models and getting the textures to go with them I'm just checking quickly to see if there appear to be any errors in here. This looks pretty normal. I think we're all set in here. And again, all of this, don't worry about missing it. It's all in the, the PDF download for the tutorial that goes through all of this with text for those that don't want to watch the video. And we can go ahead and exit Studio Compiler because that part's all done. In the next section, we'll work on the Lua files necessary for our add-on. Section 12, here we go. Now what we're going to do now is work on the Lua file, which helps govern what gets downloaded to a player from the server. So we'll set up a Lua folder for our add-on. So we're going to go into the add-ons folder, an example ball, and inside here, we're going to put a Lua folder, L-U-A, Lima Uniform Alpha. Inside that, we're going to create another folder called Auto Run. And inside that, I'm going to right click and choose New Text Document and call this Force Downloads. Now we want this to be a Lua file, not a text document. So we need to show show extensions, so I'll just do that quickly. We'll press Alt-T to bring up the Tools menu, click Folder Options, and then View, and then uncheck the box for Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Click Apply, click OK, and now we can see it's a text file. We can change the TXT to .lua, and click Yes. In the Gary's Mod world, these are the files that govern what is done in the course of the add-on. This is how we tell a client that's connecting that, hey, you know, we have this custom example ball and the textures for it and the, all the other files. Please download this because otherwise you won't see it when I spawn it in game, which is a common problem for people. You know, I got this great new thing or I just made this thing. I want to share it with people. And this lets you do that. The only caveat being we'll select notepad to open this up with now that we've changed the extension. The only caveat being that if the client doesn't have their setup, their client, their Gary's Mod game set up to allow all custom files from server, their client will ignore this and won't get the files. So they'll just see, you know, the red question mark or the checkerboard texture, depending on what they have so far. So we want to tell the client exactly what files they need. And to do that, I'm again copy and pasting the code, but we'll talk about it a little. And this will be available in text form, so don't worry about writing it all down quickly. It's either in the description or in the PDF. You do uh, this is very basic Lua stuff. Resource.add file, 
and we're saying materials, models, example ball, example ball texture of VMT. It's all relative to where the add-on folder starts. So we're inside add-ons. This Lua folder is inside add-ons as well in the example ball. So at the, at the root level where Lua is, there's materials and there's models. And we go through here to get to our example ball texture and our example ball texture VTF. So now that we have that all set up, this tells the client they need to download this, the, the material file, the texture file, and the model file. Now there are more files to this, and we should go, we should go get those. I think I'm going to combine this with section 13 because uh, they're so closely related and it makes sense to explain them together. We're going to open up computer and the C drive. So Studio Compiler makes the model files in the Gary's Mod folder. So we want to go to Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, and then down in Models, we have Example Ball now. And inside here, we've got a few different things. There's a DirectX 8 file, DirectX 9, the model file, the physics file, I forget what the SW stands for and VVD, which I'm not really sure about either, but these are all needed. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to cut them and we'll bring them up to our add-on here to models, example ball, and we'll paste them there. And this gives us essentially the complete add-on inside here. We've got all our materials, all our model files. It's basically ready to go. And now that we have that example ball MDL, which is inside of the models example ball folder, when you tell a client to download this, it's part of the magic of Gary's mod that it knows to go looking for the other five files. So that's why we don't specify all of them right there. So the, the next step will be to upload the files to the server. So I'm going to just show how to quickly do this. Um, we've covered this in a couple of tutorials on our forums as well as on, I think, on a couple other videos too in the past. And so I'm just going to do it quickly. I'm opening up FileZilla. I'm connecting to our Gary's Mod server. I'm going to go to the Add-ons folder on server side. And over here, we're going to go to the desktop, the example ball the add-ons and of course we want to match up what's in this add-ons folder with this add-ons folder so we're going to right click example ball and choose upload that sends all of our files for the add-on to the server we then have to reboot the server and join it with a client and the next video will show the next section will show exactly what happens as we join the game and get in there Okay, so we've got the add-on uploaded to the server. We want to make sure that our clients are set up to download the files, allow all custom files from the server. And as long as everyone's set up that way, we can go to the browser and find the server. I'm going to go ahead and connect. You can see the game downloading the files. It'll only take a little bit. Get all the physics and models. You can see it downloaded the files that even weren't the ones specified in the Lua file because they're related. We'll open up the Q menu and go into games, all, example ball, and spawn it in. And I had a previous one, so my, my image here hasn't updated yet. Re-render this icon. There we go. And there it is, folks, the example ball. A little bit of bounce. It does collide a little funny, but with some fine tuning, you can make this example ball behave a little better than that. It's a funny little character. And there you have it. So from nothing to 
an object in game that as long as other people have their client set up properly they'll download and see it and you can make you know beyond your wildest imagination this is a simple example of a mod but i'm sure some folks out there i know some folks out there make more complicated things and this might help get you started toward creating your own your own fun objects for everyone to use in gary's mod thanks for watching as always and um, remember, if you missed anything in the video, don't forget to try downloading the PDF tutorial version of it, which is um, also quite helpful. I'm just going to spawn a few more here for fun. There's balls everywhere. Alright, thank you for watching.